It still is hurt. There's a part of it missing from under his shirt. It's fallen from the tree and is in desperate need of casualty. Don't be damned. Man, that. Probably just scraped me. Breaks me. What's Dean saying? Fallen from a tree? Well, yeah, but man, you don't understand. This is more than just a cut to his hand. There's a hole in his chest about three feet deep and four foot wide. And I'm pretty sure you can see at least three ribs inside. Ah, oh, man sighed. You do exaggerate. There's no way he's in that state. The men in the distance, cool and calm, still walking towards us, no sign of the alarm can be seen on his faces, keeping his slow and steady pace. And apart from Andy supporting his side, all of this makes it look like we've lied. Right, I need to take you back to the start of the story. It'd just been the summer of 1990. Six glorious weeks in the sun, messing about and having fun. Oh, the things we'd done and the things we'd seen in all the places we shouldn't have been. Like, up the pit tip, abandoned by them. The miners wouldn't go there again. So we'd go on our bikes or skates, climb over the fence or under the gates. Some days, down in the farmer's field, climbing the trees which would keep us concealed. And so it was that day in September, a day that we will always remember, that we were climbing in the trees, all in shorts and colourful tees. We climbed this tree all summer long. What could possibly go wrong? We knew the tricks for climbing quick, but one of the branches we now slight, shiny and slick. Such a small branch, no more than a stub, that every foot and hand did grow together up and then back down, which we'd done each day from morning to sundown. Stu was coming down from the tree. When his foot hit this branch, it simply slipped free. He hit the ground, but still on his feet. The lad was almost, almost graceful and neat. But he could see from his face that something was wrong. He lifted the, his shirt to choke a cut, three or four inches long. Not really a cut, more a jagged rip along his chest from armpit to neck. But not one blood at all. Sorry, but not one drop of blood could be seen. The muscle, fat, and skin remained clean. Matt, Drew, he called. Get Matt, go on me as quick as you can. So there we were, and Matt had this looking awry. We said, yeah, they had me there, lads. Nice try. That changed in a moment when she said, what have you done? Stu raised his t-shirt in the early autumn sun. A nearby lad shouts, let's have a look. And turns away looking sick and warns others, don't look, dog. So a man gets Stu home and into the car, off to the hospital in Mansfield, not far. Then heads straight through reception, man walking without hesitation. Pastor Leslie says, you can't go in there. We can, says man who turns to dad and adds to Pete, see to her. Another nurse takes Stu to her bed and examines the wound which still hasn't bled. Then in comes the doctor and dons her gloves and yes, she's blessed. She shoved her hand inside Stu's chest and checks around for broken bones. Stu just sits there, no bones or bones, as the doctor works with concentration. Stu just got chiseling, fascination. Once she's happy that the ribs are twined, the doctor gets a surgical twine, a long curved needle that will stitch together the tissue and fat. Fifteen stitches from nipple to pit close up Stu's astonishing slit. Then he's given painkillers and sent away. No need for an overnight hospital stay. Pass forward a week to Stu's birthday when he's back at Mansfield Hospital again. This time to have the stitches removed. The doctor comments on the running stitch disapproved. One by one the stitches come out, but some complications create a doubt that all will run smooth as each stitch becomes harder to remove. Finally, just as the last stitch comes out, a flap of skin also pokes out. A flap that had been tucked away to look neat was now on the outside, giving poor Stuart eat. The nurse tried, but it wouldn't go back in, much to Stu's annoyance and chagrin. And of course, the lads at school poked fun, calling Stu Scaramanga, the man with the golden gun. As, although these things shouldn't be triple, just like the bond villain, Stu now had a third nipple. Yeah. 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 Yeah.